To measure the ABR, brain, um, these EEG electrodes are placed on the scalp, the mastoid, the large bone behind the ear, the top of the skull, the vertex, and then there's a ground electrode placed on the forehead. Again, like I said, these don't hurt. They're just put on with a little sticky tape. The stimulus, the clicks, click, 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 are used to generate the response. So the stimulus is a bunch of click, 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 clicks, and then the response is recorded by the electrodes. Each wave, we're most interested in the first one through five waves, represents the neuroelectrical activity at one or more sites along the auditory brainstem. So we have wave one with the eighth cranial nerve, two at the eighth cranial nerve, three, the superior olivary complex, four, the pons and the lateral lemniscus, and five, the midbrain. So just further up the pathway, these little way stations are recorded. Here's an example of an ABR. So you see, waves one, three, and five are marked on the ABRs. So we have the right ear response in the top wave and the left ear response in the bottom wave. The responses show the signal traveling up along the auditory nerve. To perform an ABR, the patient is seated comfortably in a chair in an acoustically isolated room. So again, it has to be in a quiet room because noise will also mask over these responses. The skin area is carefully cleaved. The electrodes are placed on the vertex of the forehead, then on the mastoid process, and the sound electrode is put in the ear. So here's a man reclining. He's got the probe in his ears, and the audiologist has the ABR equipment on his computer, and the waves are being generated as the click, 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 clicks are sent into the person's ear. The electrodes are taped in place. The um, computer checks to make sure that the skin is clean and that it's able to record a response. An earphone is placed in the ear. You have a series of 1,000 to 2,000 clicks presented very quickly. So click, 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 click. And it starts at a level of 70 dBHL. The test isn't affected by the sleep state. So a series of clicks are presented, 33.1 clicks per second. So it goes very fast. The ABR waves appear as several narrow peaks and troughs within the first 1 to 10 milliseconds from signal onset. The main peaks that we're looking for are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. If a response is not present at 70 dB, then the stimulus is raised up to 90 dB HL, and the audiologist will hopefully see waves at 90 dB HL. ABRs are diagnostic sites of lesion test, so they help determine if the auditory nerve is healthy. They're sensitive and they are specific. They are efficient in detecting lesions or cancers on the auditory pathway through the brainstem. So they are helpful with eighth auditory nerve tumors. When you do an ABR, a full ABR, you're going to look for the absolute latencies or the time that the first one through five waves occur at. The time between the waves, wave 1 to 5, 1 to 3, 3 to 5, the amplitude or the strength of the waves, and the threshold, the lowest level that you're able to record wave 5. So ABR is used for two separate tests. It's a test of audiological function and a test of neurological function. So it can test a person's behavioral threshold. This is important for newborn hearing screening. And it can also be used to test the health of someone's auditory nerve. So for behavioral thresholds or audiological function, the audiological threshold in a frequency range from 2 to 4,000 hertz can be inferred by the lowest intensity at which a wave 5 is identified. The wave 5 is the last wave to disappear. So testing behavioral threshold with ABR. As you decrease the signal intensity, the level of the clicks, 
from 70 dB down to 50 dB or 40 dB or 30 dB. Well, 40 dB is really when you stop. The amplitudes of the waves get smaller and smaller. The ABR threshold is the lowest level at which the wave 5 can still be observed. And it's usually within 10 to 20 dB of a person's actual threshold. So if you can find a wave 5 using a signal intensity of 40 dB HL, that means the baby has no worse than a 20 dB hearing loss, no worse than a mild hearing loss. So this test is used for diagnostic diagnosis of hearing loss, right? So to diagnose a, a hearing loss or the degree of a hearing loss, you send the clicks in and you do a threshold search where you keep going down with the intensity of the clicks until wave 5 disappears. When wave 5 disappears, that's 20 decibels within the, the range of the person's actual behavioral threshold. Another important function of ABR is to use it for neurological testing or to assess the integrity of the central auditory pathway. Neurological lesions cause an increase in the timing or the latency of the peaks, which indicates a slower auditory response. The slower auditory response may be due to a tumor weighing on the nerve or an abnormal central nervous system disorder, such as multiple sclerosis. The ABR is considered neurologically abnormal, indicating neuropathology affecting the auditory pathway of the brainstem when any of the following occur. The inner peak intervals are prolonged. For example, the distance between waves 1 and 5, 1 and 3, 3 and 5, or when wave 5 is significantly different between right ears and left ears. So if the right ear shows a normal latency, but the left ear shows an abnormal latency, that means there's probably a growth in the left ear. Any sort of asymmetry is a red flag. If your amplitude ratios are also abnormal, if the amplitude of wave 5 is always supposed to be larger than wave 1, but if they're different, if they're abnormally different, that's also a sign that something might be off. And here's a picture you see an acoustic neuroma or a cancer, a growth on the acoustic nerve would slow down the, the timing or the latency of the ABR waves. And there's your neurological, the use for neurological testing. So ABR can be used for two things to test behavioral threshold by looking at that amplitude of wave 5 when wave 5 disappears, or neurological function by looking at the latency, the timing of the waves.